Hello and welcome to the Low GFR Union Meeting where every member has ESRD and everyone with ESRD is a member. Quick refresher, ESRD is end stage renal disease or chronic kidney disease stage five. And a diagnosis of ESRD means that these patients will die without dialysis or a transplant. But for you optimists out there, it means that these people need dialysis to live. One of the key lab values for the diagnosis of ESRD is their GFR level. If it is at below, hovering around 15, that is going to lead the provider towards a diagnosis of ESRD. Um, I really feel like this is an important topic to talk about, so please share with any of your new dialysis nurses and techs because one of the things that I noticed when I first started dialysis nursing is that every single person was different. Every single assessment was different. By understanding why each patient is so different, you'll really start to understand why your assessments are so important and why talking to the patient is so important. And this will also help. I think this will be a really helpful video for any in patient nurses that are not familiar with dialysis patients and this this is where my confession comes in my confession today is that I was an inpatient nurse for eight years and the only thing that I really knew about dialysis patients is that I had a 50% chance they would be off the unit for half of my day which would make for an amazing nurse to patient ratio and that's it I was always uncomfortable about like critical creatinine levels that would get called or when to give blood or what to do with low urine output because like okay their dialysis is this normal isn't it the nurse that's asking me for a report is like oh well you know they didn't make any urine did you notify the provider and i'm just like well no because they're dialysis but i really didn't know the theory behind it so that's what we are going to talk about today so please like and subscribe and because you don't want to miss out on any union meetings because you know they get heated now for the agenda items one agenda item is potassium removal. Another one is urine production. We have phosphorus removal. And finally, we have EPO production. The agenda items do not change with each meeting, but every now and then we might also talk about protein with dialysis, but that's, I'm gonna do its own video on protein. So first I wanna to introduce to you one of the leaders of the union. These people are rare. These are the people that just will not retire. They can't really keep up with the GFR anymore. They can't keep up with all the waste products. They can't keep up with creatinine removal or urea removal or the BUN removal. But all these other things, they, they keep up. They have a little more of a liberal diet because their kidneys are still getting rid of phosphorus. They have a more liberal fluid restriction because they're still making urine. Generally, as a general rule, mm -mm, fluid restrictions for dialysis patients is 1,200 mil per day plus whatever they urinate so if they urinate a half a liter a day or 500 mils a day they'll have a 1700 mil fluid restriction and then very important agenda topic is potassium removals this one's the most lethal this one's also dangerous these two will cause long-term problems EPO this could be short-term or long-term these are people who if you try to remove fluid from them they do not tolerate it very well and you find out quickly that they do not have fluid to give you they'll have intradialytic symptoms quickly i would also argue that you do not see these people in the hospital very often unless something else is going on with them like pneumonia or a gi bleed or maybe a cardiac event you know those are always a thing with our dialysis patients one of the tough things that happens with some of these dialysis patients is they will come to us like this and then as time goes on as they get older they're going to start losing some of this kidney function that they had and this can be very hard on the patient and it can be very hard for them to understand they'll need more EPO they'll potassium levels will start coming back high and these patients, we really have to spend a lot of time educating and teaching why is this happening to them? Why do they have to change things now? Things were going so good before, why is this happening to them? And it's just kind of part of the life cycle of ESRD. And now here's a very popular guy at the dialysis unit. It is Mr. Dunzo. You will notice he doesn't have any flags. He does not have any strike posters. That's because he is Dunzo, all right? He is done cleaning the urine and he, he's also not going to do any of these other things. He's not going to produce any more EPO. So these patients might be on higher doses of EPO. He's not going to excrete any potassium. So these people have strict 
potassium restrictions in their diet. And this can be hard to do. So there are newer medications out there called Localma and Valtessa that will help keep this potassium level down. Next, they don't make any urine. You run into these people at the hospital, they don't make any urine, you don't know what to do, and you just really have to talk to the patient. You have to be like, you didn't make any urine today. Is this normal for you? And they'll be like, oh yeah, man, I'm done making urine. I haven't made urine in years. So if you call the provider, they're not going to fix it. And that's it. And then also these are the people who will not excrete phosphorus anymore. These people will like literally be on a handful of phosphorus binders. And they, these, you can watch another video about phosphorus and the dialysis patient to learn why. High phosphorus levels long-term is bad for the patient and that will ultimately might be kind of like what gets them at the end. Mr. Dunzo. And then union members come in all shapes and sizes. You might have somebody that is really good at making urine, but they're not doing anything else. So their assessment looks a little bit different. I wanna talk a little bit more about anemia in the dialysis patients. A lot of new dialysis patients will not produce EPO. EPO is a hormone that stimulates red blood cell production and their EPO might've been failing for a while. So these patients might come in with a hemoglobin under nine, under eight, under seven. And depending on their symptoms, they might need a blood transfusion. So it is not uncommon that new dialysis patients will need a unit of blood. But the complicated thing about that is a lot of these patients are waiting for a transplant. So we really need to intervene quickly with EPO and iron to prevent their need for a blood transfusion because blood transfusions will produce antibodies and those antibodies are bad when a patient needs a kidney transplant. That transplant can interact with the antibodies formed from the blood transfusions. With kidney, people that want a kidney transplant, we need to avoid blood transfusions as much as possible. More to come on that on another video. Dialysis patients that are admitted into the hospital might need blood transfusions, whether it is from a GI bleed or they have some other kind of hematological event going on. The nursing intervention that I want you to remember as an inpatient nurse is that in a unit of blood, there is potassium in that blood and there is potassium within those cells. The longer that the blood sits, the more hemolysis of the cells there is. And when that happens, when those cells break, they release potassium. So this unit of blood, is going to have more potassium than one might think. What else is with this unit of blood? It is fluid. There's usually around 300 mils of liquid in a unit of blood. And depending on what other diagnosis this dialysis patient have, i.e. severe heart failure, this 300 mil bolus of blood might be a lot for the patient to take in. So it, all, it is also safer for them to receive that unit of blood while they're on dialysis because there we can remove extra fluid as needed. So do not feel bad when you need, call, need to call the dialysis nurse and let them know that you have blood transfusion orders. That is the expectation of the dialysis nurse is to transfuse the blood with dialysis because then we can put the blood transfusion in pre-filter and help clean out that extra potassium and prevent hyperkalemia with that dialysis patient. Other key nursing interventions that you can expect with any dialysis patient, what, whether it's Mr. Dunzo or the guy that just will not retire, is that you can expect strict INOs and you can expect daily weights. I would also say a renal diet. As you have learned, all of these dialysis patients all have the same diagnosis of ESRD, but they are all very different. The more you get to know them, you will realize how different they are and also that their ESRD is constantly evolving. I also want to close this video by saying what I'm talking about is very specific for ESRD. Patients in the hospital that are AKI, they were not previously on dialysis before coming into the hospital. Maybe they came into the hospital with severe organ failure from a cardiac arrest, sepsis, or they had kidney disease and they received contrast and now they have a GFR below 15. The rules of AKI patients are very different than ESRD. I do have more videos on AKI patients. Please check them out. And, oh my gosh, oh, I also want to bring Bubba out here. Come here, Bubba. Oh, look at your skinny Bubba. Say hi, Bubba. She got a haircut yesterday. She's a little out of it. Right, Bubba? Okay. And that pretty much concludes this meeting. I hope that these visuals really kind of helped you understand what is going on in the kidneys, that the kidneys are not just about making urine. They do a lot of different things. And that is... The end of our low GFR union meeting. Thank you everyone for being here and stay tuned for the next meeting coming to YouTube near you.